My mother, Lillian May Jones, first visited Bampton in the summer of 1934, aged 15. She was born and brought up in a two-up, two-down terraced house in Crouch End, North London, along with her parents and three brothers, her sister having died of meningitis when she was only 12. At the time of her first summer holiday without the family, she was working as an office clerk at Catesby's, a department store in Tottenham Court Road, where the very rich bought carpets for downstairs and linoleum for upstairs. Although Catesby's closed in the 1960s, it has listed building status and still houses retail stores below and offices above. My ma was a great outdoors woman. From the age of eight, she was swimming and playing water polo at the newly opened Hornsey Swimming Baths nearby. She played tennis and netball for both her school and county and yearned to swim in the sea, a passion she held all her life. At some point during 1934, Ma discussed with Charlie, a female colleague at Catesby's, the possibility of going on holiday together somewhere in the West Country. Ma found the holiday in The Lady, known for its classified ads for domestic service, childcare and holiday accommodation. I do not know the precise advertisement that Ma responded to during the early summer of that year, but I suspect it was fairly vague like this one, but seemed to offer the kind of holiday the girls were looking for. In any event, the fact that the holiday was advertised in The Lady led my grandfather to believe that all was in order, and he gave the guard on the Great Western Railway a generous five shillings, about fifteen pounds in today's money, to ensure that Ma and Charlie were looked after during their train journey to Bampton. The two girls were collected by pony and trap and delivered to a farm that Ma believed had some connection with the Palfrey family. Whatever the circumstances, a working Exmoor farm with eager young farmhands who were a bit too familiar and excited by the prospect of spending two weeks with girls from London was not quite what Ma and Charlie had in mind. The following morning, Ma paid the farmer's wife for one night's accommodation and set off with Charlie to walk along the rail tracks in the direction, she hoped, of Bampton Station and a train back to London. However, in a short space of time, they came to Lower Lodfin Crossing, where Mr and Mrs Alderman lived. It had always been the tradition for the wives of signalmen to run the crossings. The work was not too hard, but you had to be on call for anything up to 16 hours a day. As Ma and Charlie walked past the signal box, Mrs Alderman looked out from her cottage window and asked them where they had come from and where they thought they were going. It transpired that the word was out that there were two London girls coming to Bampton on holiday and Mrs Alderman did not appear the slightest bit surprised that their choice of accommodation had not quite come up to scratch. Although the keeper's cottage was small and Mrs Alderman already had a lodger staying, she offered the girls a room and said they could stay at the crossing for the remainder of their two weeks holiday. It was not long before Ma was manning the crossing gates, collecting milk from the farm next door and even helping with haymaking. She also made close friends with a local lad, 21-year-old Gordon Hagley, who delivered groceries to the crossing, and Gordon took the two girls on a trip to Tinmouth. For my mother, a holiday that started out as something of a disaster turned into what became a lifelong love affair with Exmoor. She would return each summer on her own to spend time with the Aldermans and Gordon, and this would continue right up until the war years. In 1940, Ma met my father, a London policeman, and they married in December 1942. I was born in October 1943, by which time my father was in Canada training with the RAF. During the Blitz, the South East was subject to heavy bombing. 
and Ma took me to take refuge in Bampton, where we were joined by my maternal grandmother. Although Mr Alderman was still working on the railway, the family were now living in a small terraced cottage in the town. The conditions in the house were very basic and very cramped, with no toilet facilities and only a camping stove to cook on. Mrs Alderman was also trying to look after two young evacuees, girls of seven and eight, with whom she was very strict. My grandmother shared a bedroom with us, and to fill the time she found herself a job cleaning in a local pub. After three months, we returned to London, just in time for the Doodlebug bomb raids. My father was killed in action in February 1945. He saw me on only a handful of occasions, one of which was in Bampton. It probably took him a couple of days of precious leave to reach us from London, and Ma welcomed him with a request to dispose of our toilet waste. This was spread over Mr Alderman's vegetable patch at the top of the garden, where, apparently, he grew the most wonderful runner beans. Ma and I always spent our summer holidays in Devon. During my pre-teen years, we would travel to Minehead on the train and hire bicycles. One year, we stayed at Butlin's. When Ma learned to drive and bought a car, we could be more adventurous with our Devon holidays, and it is then we discovered the East Devon coast and Branscombe Beach. In 1970, Ma retired from her job in London, and she became a matron at Rusden School, near Lyme Regis. She bought up Anglo in Colliton in 1974 and lived there for the rest of her life. To celebrate my mother's 90th birthday in November 2009, her only request was to spend some time on Exmoor, visiting old haunts, crossing tar steps and climbing to the top of Dunkery Beacon. There had been tremendous storms during the autumn the River Baal was still running wild and heavy logs had been swept over tar steps. But undaunted, Ma walked across the ancient bridge. On Dunkery Beacon, there was a howling gale and the temperature was at freezing. But nevertheless, she made it to the summit cairn. We dined in the Swan at Bampton and later at Lodfin Crossing, the present owners invited us in and Ma sat in the signal box, now their living room, and described exactly where she had worked the signal levers 75 years before. My mother died in 2012 at the age of 92, and on the anniversary of her birthday in 2013, we scattered her ashes on her beloved Exmoor, close to Tar Steps. <laughs> <laughs> 